supercontinent exists because most of the land area is far from the ocean and therefore very dry. As Rodinia broke up into small fragments, form its formidably arid regions became wetter and weathering rates increased accordingly. If the snowball earth theory is correct, and ice really did predominantly cover the oceans, the water cycle would have a hard time functioning. There would be very little water available for evaporation and therefore very little precipitation, causing an intense desertification of the land continents. Geologists use drop stones as evidence of melting glaciers. These are stones carried along in the ice as, glacier, as a glacier travels and by icebergs after they calve off into the sea. When the ice melts, these stones drop down one by one and become embedded in the sedimentary layers. In the 1950s and early 60s, researchers found that the magnetic properties of rocks associated with some of the glacial deposits indicated the formation at very low latitudes. During the present ice age, northern hemisphere glaciers have never pushed farther than 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. If neoprotozoic glaciers had existed near sea level in the tropics, that would indicate a very different ice age indeed, and many geologists were skeptical. But as more and more data become available, the initial results have been corroborated. It seems almost inescapable that these frigid climates had extended very close to the equator. Thus was born the idea of Snowball Earth. These are banded iron formations, or BIFs. The oldest, band, the oldest BIFs formed around 3.8 billion years ago. Peak formation time was about 2.5 billion years ago, but they stopped forming 1.75 billion years ago, apart from a small blip at around 700 million years ago, as you can see in the graph in the bottom left. Such extreme climate conditions suge suggested by the glacial debris did not automatically lead to the central conclusion of this theory, that the oceans were also frozen. The evidence for this idea came first from the examination of ocean sediments in the Neoproterozoic by Joe Kirschfink, who coined the term Snowball Earth. In 1992, Kirschfink pointed out that peculiar sedimentary deposits rich in iron, known as BIFs, occurred in a number of localities around the world just at the time of these late Neoprozoic glaciations. Geologists were familiar with BIF deposits from early on in the Earth's history, but none had been known about for billions of years. Their occurrence requires a buildup of a very large amount of iron in seawater, a phenomenon that cannot occur today because of the oxygenation of the ocean. BIFs are quite basically rust deposits and the restriction to the early part of the geologic record is thought to be due to the low concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere at the time. The occurrence of BIFs in the Neoproterozoic was an enigma because by that time in the Earth's history, there should have been enough oxygen in the atmosphere to prevent the necessary buildup of dissolved iron in the ocean. Neoproterozoic glacial deposits are almost everywhere blanketed, blanketed by carbonate rocks. These rocks are typically formed in warm and shallow seas such as those of the Bahamas. The transition from glacial deposits to these cap carbonates is abrupt and lacks evidence that significant time passed between when the glaciers dropped their last loads and when the carbonates were formed. Geolog geologists were stumped to explain so sudden a change from glacial to tropical climates. The carbon isotopes in the neoproterozoic rocks of Namibia record a different situation than what we would expect with a very lively ocean. Just before the glacial deposits, the amount of carbon-13 plummets to levels equivalent to a volcanic source, a drop that is thought to record decreasing biological productivity as ice encrusted the oceans at high latitudes and the earth teetered on the edge of a runaway freeze. Once the oceans iced over completely, productivity would have essentially ceased, but no carbon record of this time interval could exist because no calcium carbonate could have formed in a completely ice-covered ocean. This drop in carbon-13 persists through the cap carbonates atop these glacial deposits and then gradually rebounds to higher levels of carbon-13 several hundred meters above, presumably recording the recovery of life at the end of the hothouse period. An original argument against the snowball earth hypothesis was that if the earth were to experience such a strong freeze, it may not be able to come back. What people weren't thinking about were the fact that our earth has a molten core, as well as plate tectonics. Kirschfink argued that during a global glaciation, shifting tectonic plates would continue to build volcanoes and supply the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. At the same time, there would be no liquid water in the air needed to erode rocks and bury carbon. With nowhere to go, carbon dioxide would collect to incredibly high levels, high enough to heat the planet and end the global freeze, supposedly. On the snowball earth theory, um, I look forward to meeting all of you and 